Hello, this is Sonia Jones with GIP Financials, your small business CFO, and this is video number two of the PPP loan forgiveness. So if you haven't watched video one, I put the link in the description below, so make sure that you check that out. And on video one, we just went through kind of like the history of the PPP loan application and also... Um, share the resource of the PPP frequently asked questions document as well. And we talked um, briefly about the payroll expenses and the non-payroll expenses. And that was pretty much all we talked about in video one, just went through um, the S application, if I'm not mistaken. And I think in page four and five of that application, and if you qualify for, if you have to use the easy form or the original um, 3508 form, I think that's right, 3508 form. I got my notes here. Make sure I said that right. Yeah, 3508. Um, the instructions include in detail the type of payroll cost that can be um, eligible as well as the non-payroll cost. Okay, so today I'm going to walk you through what those best strategies are, things I've helped my clients with. Um, of the clients uh, that have applied, two of them are currently in forgiveness status. One actually got her loan forgiven a nine thousand dollar loan and so we're waiting on the other one to be forgiven and that's i think we're like seventy six hundred dollars right so although they these are smaller loans but keep in mind every dollar counts and if you got your ducks in a row especially for both of them all i had to do was just download their stuff off of quickbooks and boom it was it was really really easy and we're going to talk a little bit about that too, about the documentations that are required as well. So if you have applied for the PPP, you've received it, you have about eight weeks before your um, bank or your lender, whoever you use, they should send you a reminder email and say like, hey, it's week eight. Um, it's time for you to apply for forgiveness. Okay. And so I believe you have up to 10 months from the date that the money was put in your account to apply for forgiveness. So first thing I would let you know is please do not wait. Okay, the smaller your loan is, I say try to get it forgiven within the eight weeks if you can. Um, I know for some of the, for the loans after the second round of PPP, if I'm not mistaken, you had the choice between the eight week or the 24 week. The first round, when it first came out, it was only eight weeks. So with that be said, let me get my notes up here. All right. So we talked about the two ways you can get your loan forgiven, that you can spend 100% of it on payroll, or you can spend 60% of it on payroll and 40% on non-payroll costs. Okay, so those are the two ways you can get it forgiven, 100% payroll or a 60-40 split, 60 payroll, 40% non-payroll. All right, so let's talk about the 100% payroll option. If you are going to do that, which I highly encourage everybody to do because that non-payroll, if you don't have proper documentation, don't give the lender any reason to not forgive your loan completely. That's what I say. All right, so if you're using 100% of your um, PPP forgiveness on payroll, this is what I suggest that you do. One, on the application, you do not have to include the non-payroll um, expenses. Keep that to the side, because remember, you just want these it to be easy to the eye for the lender. So if you've got if you've had enough, you know, in between your eight or twenty-four weeks in gross revenue that was either at or above your PPP um, loan amount, you should be fine. Okay, 
So you don't have to include the non-payroll expenses if you're using 100% of it for payroll. And I know that you're thinking like, I remember on the PPP application, they asked me to check all those different boxes, right? What I was gonna use it for, but you were telling the truth because you included payroll, right? In this case, you realize I just need to use it for payroll. That's all. Then I'm gonna check for that other stuff. And next thing, if you have employees, and remember we talked about that in video one, the W-2 employees that would qualify for cash compensation, okay? You need to first contact your payroll vendor, whoever that is that processes your payroll, because they're going to have the information and the reports that you need to submit to your lender to prove that you paid those wages out, okay? So include those payroll reports from your payroll processor. So where do you get this info? Like I said, from your payroll process, okay? And what information do you ask for? These are some of the reports that you can ask for. Um, your direct deposit or your check register. They might also call it a payroll register because what that will show them is on that specific payroll date, every employee that get paid, their total earnings, Sometimes they also show year to date, which you won't need year to date, but they'll show um, the gross amount and their net amount, as well as the taxes that were um, deducted on their behalf, stuff like that. And it will also show if you pay um, insurance or retirement for your employees, it will show that as well. They're at least their portion of what they have to pay. Okay. Uh, we talked about uh, taxes. It's going to show, um, there should be a report solely for taxes. Um, my employer, we use Paylossi, so we have a payroll report. We have a register, and then we also have um, what we call the payroll summary report that shows how much the direct deposit was, how much each specific tax, like Medicare, Social Security, um, unemployment, all that. It shows everything. And also benefits in retirement. So if you contribute um, on your employee's behalf, if you have to pay your medical um, vendors directly, if you have to pay invoice to Blue Cross Blue Shield, Humana, Signal, whomever, Aetna, whoever, you have to include those invoices. If you are contributing to a retirement uh, product on behalf of your employees and you pay them directly, you have to submit that information as well, those invoices. You have to show, I would suggest that you show the invoice as well as the bank statement showing the deduction of that benefit. Okay, in most situations, those, um, if you, especially if you're doing it online, the medical and the, your medical, your payroll, as well as your retirement, nine times out of 10, they're going to ask you to deduct that directly from your checking account. No credit cards and stuff like that. They want the checking account. And that's why you have to have your, checking account in the name of the business with an EIN for the business, okay? Especially if you're doing payroll, they won't even touch you without that information. Straight up, okay? So, um, like I said, make sure you have vendor payment receipts and also in addition to those invoices, attach the bank, the bank statement, highlight where you paid the retirement, vendor, um, the payroll vendor, because you have to show the amount of the direct deposit, the amount that the taxes were taken out of, as well as the payroll processing fees, all of that can be included in uh, cash compensation. Okay, and also um, your payroll uh, providers, your payroll vendors should have PPP reports customizable PPP reports. I can't speak for the other ones, but I'm sure talk about pay licensing. They are not paying me. They should pay me, but they are not paying me. 
um, because Pelosi is fired because Pelosi did such an awesome job and not only having customized reports for the PPP, I mean, we can just literally print them out and just submit them to the lender. It was beautiful. They also had webinar taking us through every, every law that was changed, updated. They had a webinar on it. It was amazing. That's why you invest in your business. It's those things right there that will keep you out of trouble. Okay. Whoever told you that you can do all this on your own lied to you. And they do, do not have your best interest at heart. I'm just going to tell you that. Maybe I need to do a video on who needs to be on your team. Because I see too many small businesses who just don't have quality uh, team members and we can tell. All right, so we talked about this. So if you have em employees and you use cash compensation, those are all the documents that you need. All right, Schedule C people, you would be under owner's compensation, okay? Do not use the cash compensation area. So kind of hear me clearly on this one. If you are doing the forgiveness application on your online, on your lender's online portal, they're going to ask for these um, figures probably separately. But then when it's time to generate the final document, it's going to come out in one of those SBA applications with the information pre-filled. Okay, so just kind of preparing you for that. But if you are a Schedule C filer, or a 1099 person, you have to put your information under owner's compensation. So what will your documentation look like? Okay, make sure that you include compensation in the equivalent period of your applicable compensation in 2019 or 2020. So what that means is whatever, um, if you used your 2019 tax return to determine your PPP amount or your 2020 tax return um, to calculate your PP amount, make sure that what you stated as the loan amount that you requested for your PPP, make sure that it matches or the your in order for to get it forgiven, the amount that you requested for the PPP the income that you received has to be at or above in order to be considered for forgiveness. If your if your gross revenue is not does not equate to the um, amount of the PPP loan, you might have to also include non payroll costs. That's all that that is saying. Okay, and also compensation in covered period for uh, 2020 or 2021. And so that's why I was saying also the gross earnings from your bank account statement. Okay, so you got to think about this. So if you are a Schedule C person, hopefully you have a bank account, okay, in the name of the business. Now, if you got the PPP loan, nine times out of 10, they probably, they weren't going to entertain you unless you had a bank account in the name of your business prior to February 15, 2020, because a lot of the lenders were asking that you submit bank statements proving that you had your account prior to February 15, 2020. After that third round, they just were not playing with people anymore. So with that being said, you should be recording your income in one of two ways. So I have seen like the first loan that I've had forgiven. All my person had to do was uh, submit bank statements between the cup that included the covered period, right? And she did eight weeks. So she had at least three bank statements, two or three bank statements. And the amounts that were deposited every month combined had to be at or above um, the amount of her PPP loan. So she got that forgiven, okay? 
Another way that you can do it, uh, which is my preferred way, <laughs> um, is that whatever monies that you receive in the name of the business that you pay yourself, either you write a check to yourself and in the memo you write payroll or you create an external transfer between the business account to your personal account. And if you're using QuickBooks or any type of accounting software, that transaction has to be categorized as what we call owner's draw or personal payment to owner. This depends on um, the version that you're using and what that um, category is um, named under. Okay. So I've seen it a couple of ways, but to guarantee, right, there's nothing wrong with paying yourself and make sure that you have a transfer. But like I said, I've also seen it too, where if your um, bank statement is showing that you've received that revenue, then they'll uh, consider that owner's compensation also. Um, and then, um, documents, other documents, bank statements showing income and expenses for the covered period. So if your gross revenue does not equate to the 100% um, of the PPP and you have to use non-payroll expenses, just make sure that you print that bank statement out, that you highlight those qualifying transactions and you write on the side, even though the description may say BP fuel or Kroger fuel, make sure you write on there, um, utilities, colon, gas, be as descriptive as humanly possible, okay? And also include the vendor receipt and the check or the credit card or the debit transaction. Like I said, that's highlighted on this statement, okay? The way that we do, especially like with debit and checks, that's one thing because those transactions, you see those on the bank statement. So say if you paid your medical insurance, right, with a signal for your business. So you wrote a check to signal, right? So for um, documentation to show that expense, you would need to have the invoice that you paid to signal you need to have a copy of the check that you wrote to Signal. And you have to have a copy of the bank statement that's showing that that check cleared upon payment to Signal. Okay. If it is a credit card transaction and it is for PPP that you ordered on Amazon, right? Make sure that you have, Amazon has like a printable invoice summary or something like that. When you click on the transaction, it's gonna be over there on the, I think on the right side, printable invoice summary or something like that. And it's gonna have it itemized. And then at the bottom, it's gonna show the last four digits of the credit card and then the amount right there. Or if you've made one order, but it's multiple purchases with different vendors, or if the cost was split anyway, then it's going to show the amount of, oh, it's going to show the credit card that was used, the date and the amount of the first transaction and the date and the amount of the second transaction to make sure you use that one. I think it's called a printable invoice summary or something like that. Um, so you're going to have that receipt from Amazon. You're going to highlight the purchase on the credit card statement. Okay, and you are going to um, print out the bank statement showing that that credit card bill was paid or at least a payment was made on that particular statement. Yep. So yeah, it's thorough like that. So just, just telling you what you need to do. So if you haven't been keeping up with your stuff, you need to start downloading those bank statements and stuff now. Okay, so what else we got? Required documentation. 
All right, so this is um, what's required of the SBA for these PPP loans. Borrowers must keep all documentation for six years after the date the loan is forgiven or repaid in full. That's a long time. <laughs> so this is what I suggest that you do is that you get some type of manila folder. Let's see, I got a couple of them here, but, or you can get um, one of those brown clasp envelopes, you do a manila folder and you need to write on here PPP documents, save until, and then you need to put whatever from the, the date that you got the money, which if it was April the 1st, 2021, Gonna be saving to April the first, twenty uh, twenty seven. Put that right there, and put every document that you received in there. I would also recommend that you have a not only a physical copy of your records, but also a digital copy of your records as well. Google Drive, Dropbox, they have uh, free tiers. Make sure that you use those. Thumb drive, whatever type of drive, cloud drive, put it somewhere. Okay, because you're going to need and put it somewhere that you're going to remember the password and you're going to be able to hold it. There you go. All right. If the SBA or an authorized representative of the SBA asks for these files, please give it to them. This is federal money. And if they ask, if they just start randomly pulling stuff, because remember what I told you, Yes, they may have given you the money. Yes, they may have forgiven it, but they can still ask for those records down the line. Because remember, their goal is to make sure that they get this money back and they got all the money that they gave to us. They got to, we got, they got to recoup that money. So they're banking on you not to have your stuff in order. So if they come back and say three years later, hey, I know we forgave your PPP money, but we just want to see where's your stuff. And if you can't produce that stuff, although, yeah, you sent them documentation during the forgiveness application, but if you can't produce that stuff, do not give them an opportunity or a reason why they can take that from you and make you repay anything. So please keep your stuff. Please keep your stuff. All right. And just as a review about the payroll documents, call your payroll company. If you have employees, pay, call your payroll company and they should be able to give you all the information that you need. Okay. And remember, like I said, if you don't know the names of those reports, it should be at least a payroll register, um, a payroll summary or report that shows like your taxes. And then also um, anything that shows, I said payroll register, your payroll summary that shows your taxes. And then if there's anything um, like what they call like an FTE count, because you gotta remember if you got employees that make over a hundred thousand dollars, you have to make sure that you show that it's capped off, okay? So anything like that, but your payroll, people should know exactly which reports that you need. Um, if, you're, if you are submitting payments for benefits in retirement, you need the invoice, the proof of payment, and the proof that that check or that payment actually cleared the bank, okay? So you're gonna need at least the invoice, a copy of the payment, and um, a copy of the bank statement, highlight, yellow, highlight, okay? And um, let's see here. If you are, uh, oh, one other thing, for W-2 employees, make sure if once you get those reports and you read them, and if there's any like symbols or abbreviations and stuff that you don't understand, you stay on that phone, you get it all the information that you need from your payroll people because you don't want the SBA to be asking you stuff and you don't know what it is. 
Okay. So anything that's on that payroll register, tax report, any of that, and you don't know what it is, or you don't know how to get that calculation, call them and make them walk you through it. Okay. If you're a Schedule C person, remember you are under owner's compensation. Make sure that you show your bank statements, showing your income and expenses for the covered period. Make sure your total gross revenue, the amount of deposits that are coming into your account for that covered period are at or above the amount that you receive for the PPP. If you are paying yourself, which I, this is, I highly suggest that you, hopefully you have been paying yourself since you got the money, okay? External transfer from the business um, account to your personal account or your writing checks to yourself. Remember, because this is the payroll protection program, but they are, I have seen some flexibility because they do understand that, you know, there are some Schedule C people out there and they, and they probably have not been doing what they were supposed to do, right? And I'm probably paying them, you know, as long as your business is generating revenue, it's going to be one of two ways. But like I said, we're not giving the bank or the lender any reason to say, oh, well, no, pay yourself. And that way it is undeniable that although you've made money in your company, you're taking a portion and paying yourself. And whatever you were paying yourself prior to the PPP, I suggest that you keep that going if you can, because you still got to maintain your business. Um, and then, like I said, any vendor receipts, check, credit card, debit transactions, make sure that you have the invoice, um, the proof of payment, and the bank statement showing that that transaction cleared. Or if it's a credit card, make sure that you paid that bill, that credit card bill. You don't have to pay it in full, but just show that you've paid something on it, okay? Even if it's the minimum payment. Say, you know, I'm keeping up with my credit card bill. I just want to show y'all that, okay? So that's all I got for the second video. So I hope this helped out um, to some degree. And like I said, explanation of the payroll and the non-payroll expenses are in the instructions on each version of the payroll, the PPP forgiveness application, whether it's the 3508, I keep forgetting that number, it, whether it's the original 3508, the 3508EZ, or the 3508S, okay? Um, I will have a link to the first video as well as um, I'll probably copy all the applications and um, the FAQ for the PPP, um, again, in the description as well. Um, I don't know what I'm going to talk about for July yet, so, but just stay tuned. And, um, you know, hey, I'm just a small business person. I do the best I can. I get these videos to y'all. It's one thing. Once I start gaining some momentum and start playing out this content and posting reels and all this and tips and all this other stuff, then your girl will be on fire. So I hope this helped out significantly for you. Um, reach out to me. My email is info at gipfinancials.com. Hit me on my website, gipfinancials.com and schedule a free consultation with me. You get 30 minutes for free. And if you're scared to death of trying to do this thing on your own, don't be, that's why I'm here. Um, it'll be the best investment that you ever made. I promise, because I'm gonna be with you to the end of this thing, okay? And if you want to follow me on social media, I'm on YouTube. Clearly, you can see that. And under GIP Financials, <laughs> Facebook and IG under GIP underscore financials and LinkedIn under Sonya Jones. Y'all have an amazing day and stay in position. Yeah, get in position first, but then stay in position. Take care.